What's up guys? Welcome back to Werner Garage. So we got a lot going on today. We're going to talk lithium batteries today. Uh, the garage is a total mess though. Uh, we got a lot of cool projects going on. Let me, uh, let me turn this around. I'll show you what we got happening. All right. So the big thing today, Battleborn lithium batteries for the RV. That's the, the big thing going on. But there is a lot of other stuff happening over here. This garage is a mess and it's because we got a lot of things coming in and a lot going on. So first off, you know, we got a bunch of stuff going on with what I'm going to call Project Warlock, which is doing a little uh, refresh of our Warlock 25 World Class Powerboat. We've got some sea decking here. Uh, we also have a new battery charger. I've got some cool stuff happening over at um, Martinez Marine Interiors. We're getting some custom seats. We're going to go visit them soon. I'm going to show you more there. Now, of course, we're also not going to forget about the Can-Am. So a lot going on with the Can-Am uh, coming up here in the next few months. Shock Therapy Springs. So that is super exciting. We also have an Extreme Power dual battery setup. So we're going to be able to run dual batteries in the Can-Am. I'm super excited about that. And then also a lot of RV projects. We have a Magna Shade going on. The RV batteries, the lithiums we're doing today. Uh, so let's, uh, let's do that. There's a lot of cool projects coming. Got a lot of neat stuff for you guys. But today we're going to focus in on the lithium batteries. So let's dig into lithiums. Hey guys, so I'm going to do a quick uh, crash course on lithium batteries and what they're going to do for you. So first off, um, one thing I want to say about lithium batteries is if you're going to put these in your motorhome, RV, toy hauler, whatever, really the only reason you need this is if you're doing a lot of dry camping or primitive camping where you basically don't have any hookups, no electrical. Um, if every campsite you go to already has hookups and you're never really gonna dry camp or, or primitive camp, I don't think the investment for these is definitely gonna be worth it. Uh, I think you're gonna get along fine with just a standard set of lead acid batteries. So, you know, that, that's what I think about that. Now, if you do dry camp, that's where these bad boys come in. And let me tell you what makes them unique. It's all about their capacity. So when you buy a floating, or not floating, sorry, a, uh, a flooded lead acid battery, let's say you buy a 27 class battery, which is about the size of one of these. That battery, let's say hypothetically, is 80 amp hours, okay? So your amp hours is like your fuel tank. It's how much juice you have. Well, with 80 amp hours on a lead acid battery, you only get to use 40 of them. If you use more than, than half the capacity, which in an 80 amp battery would be 40, you start really damaging that battery and degrading it and you're gonna end up ruining it. With lithium batteries, that's not the case. You can use the entire rated amp hours. So these Battleborns specifically are 100 amp hours. So what that means is you can use all 100 amp hours. So one of these batteries is gonna be just as good as running two of those 27s, actually better than running two let's say 80 amp hour batteries, because that means two of those together is 160, which means you're only getting 80 amp hours of, of gas tank of, of usage. Here we've got 100. So when we run two of these guys in parallel, we've got 200 amp hours. The amount of weight and lithium, I'm sorry, uh, non-lithium batteries, the um, lead acid flooded batteries, the amount of batteries that you would need to get close to 200 amp hours that's usable, I had three 29 classes in my toy hauler. I'll attach that video so you guys can see that video if you want. It worked really well, but I mean, it was a lot of weight and a lot of space and hassle, which is two of these, I'm getting better than that. Um, so these guys are pretty awesome. So that's kind of my thing with lithium. If you're gonna dry camp and you want range, you know, you wanna be able to run electronics, charge batteries, you wanna, what, let the kids watch TV or run in a Wi-Fi booster or you got your stereo outside with your lighting, you're gonna need this kind of stuff if you're not in a situation where you have any hook. Okay. So with all that being said, let's say you've decided, hey, I want lithium batteries. I want that big fuel tank of juice to be able to power my stuff. There's a couple things that you need to know. Um, you can't just go take lithium batteries and throw them in your vehicle. Um, you could actually mess some things up, including messing up the batteries. And let me explain. So there's a couple components that you need to be familiar with and make sure that they're compatible. Number one is your onboard charging system for your batteries. So every trailer, toy hauler, RV, all has an onboard charging system. 
a lot of them are built right into the fuse panel. Um, I have a progressive dynamics fuse panel in my RV. Uh, I also had one in my toy hauler and those have the charger built right into them. Depending on the model you have, some of them are lithium compatible. So on my particular one, there's a little boost button I have to push, which is gonna bump up the voltage of that charger to bring these to the optimal voltage they need to be so that they balance and charge correctly. If you only use a standard charger that's not lithium, that doesn't hit the higher like 14 plus volts when it charges, these batteries will never get fully charged and they will not get balanced. And if you leave lithiums unbalanced for long periods of time, that can be bad for them. So make sure you have the right charger. And the easiest way to do it is find your model number on your charger and just go give them a call. So I called up Progressive Dynamics, said, look, here's what I got. They said, hey, no problem. You just gotta hit that button periodically to top them off. I was like, sweet, we're good to go. The other component, and if you're dealing with a toy haul or a, tra or a, a travel trailer, the charger is really the biggest concern. But if you have an RV, you have a chassis battery, you've got an engine, things are a little different. And what you most likely have is what's called a battery isolation manager, also known as a BIM. There are BIMs that work with lead acid batteries and there are BIMs that are for lithium batteries. You gotta make sure you have the right BIM. So in my case, I did not. So I did order up um, this lithium bin, or BIM, sorry, this is also a, uh, this one's a Precision Circuits is the company that makes this one. Uh, that's one of the main ones out there. I have a Precision Circuits BIM in there right now that's for the lead acid. So I'm gonna uninstall that, install this in place of it. That's gonna set me up for my batteries so I'm good to go. It's a very simple installation. It is not complicated. I will show you guys how to do it so it's not a big deal. All right, so that's the whole speech on the lithium batteries and what you need to do. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna, we're gonna get into installing these guys. All right guys, so here's our setup. We got our batteries on our tray. This is where our lithiums are gonna go. And right back up in here, there's our BIM. So we're gonna replace that with our lithium one. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uninstall these batteries. Now before you do that, you wanna make sure you shut off power to your, uh, to your rig. So there's a main power switch somewhere. I've already shut that off. So I'm just gonna take these bolts off, uninstall these batteries. While the batteries are out, I'm gonna do the BIM and then put the new lithiums in. So let's get started. All right guys, now that the batteries are out, we can easily access the BIM on, uh, on my rig. Obviously that can vary depending on your motorhome or trailer. Uh, we're gonna dig in and uninstall the BIM. I take a photo of it first just to know the wiring diagram to make sure I have it and then I'm good to go. Okay guys, lithium BIM is installed. Um, here is our, here's our old one. One thing I'll tell you, there is a wire called dash switch. The dash switch wire now goes to something that the lithium one calls signal, which is right there in the center almost. So we got everything hooked up. I've got it a little bit of an angle just so the wires and everything align correctly. So now at this point, we're ready to put our batteries back in, hook it up and test it. So let's, uh, let's get the batteries rolling. Um, you will want to have a couple ring connectors, probably some extra wire. I had to make an extension you can see in the white ground wire. Uh, I had to change some blade connectors over to uh, the, uh, the ringlet type ones, the ring connectors. So there might be a couple things you need, but overall it's a pretty straightforward process. I just threw a couple stainless steel screws in it, so we're mounted and good to go. We got our battle borns in place. Now I've laid them out the exact same way. I took a photo 
of the lead acid batteries and where the positive and negatives were to make this really easy so all the wiring connects right together. So they're in the same locations. Instead of top mounted, these are side mounted, but they give you the nuts and bolts to do this. So they just drop right in, plenty of room. Like I said, I think they're about the size of a 27 class, uh, but you can see their dimensions online. Uh, a lot easier to handle. I mean, a total of 60 pounds compared to, you know, I think over 80 pounds. So that's kind of nice to have a little weight savings here. So our tray and everything stays intact so I can move them in and out, which is gonna be great. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the wiring and we're gonna test it and make sure everything's good to go. All right, guys, we're all hooked up. So the orientation's a little bit different. So my tray cannot come out as far as I would like. So I had to do my negatives first and then do my positives so that I could pull the tray out the positive wires, keep the batteries from going out too far. Uh, it's a little bit different with the sideways mounts, but it works great. So everything is hooked up. It clears no problem, goes right back in, and then just snaps in place. So we're all locked in, good to go. I still have to put my straps on the batteries to keep them from going anywhere but that you can see they fit perfectly inside. All right, guys, so as we come inside, you can see here, we're at 13.2, and we're not even fully charged yet, so that is great. So now with our lithiums, again, way more capacity, maintaining a much higher voltage, which is awesome. I quickly wanna show you the charging process. So again, because I don't have a lithium dedicated charging system, I have this guy here. Now, with this unit here, there is a little button right there. You see this light solid green, there's a button underneath it. So by pushing that button, this went solid green and I'm now in what's called boost mode. So Progressive Dynamics has a charge wizard. So if you have a non-lithium charger, but you have this boost mode, you can hit that button and for four hours, it's gonna run it at a much higher voltage. And you can see I'm at 14.2 already. So that's bringing the charge up coming in, which is great. So for lithium batteries to balance correctly, they need to be above 14 volts to balance. So this charge wizard is doing a great job. So it'll run for four hours and go back to normal mode. So the only thing I have to do is I have to remember to go push that button if I wanna to top my batteries off. If I don't hit that button, the batteries will not fully charge. They're gonna stop at a lower voltage number, which uh, is not gonna balance them and I'm not getting my full capacity. So all right, guys, that's going to pretty much do it for our lithium battery install video. Pretty simple. Again, awesome upgrade if you're dry camping and hitting the desert like we are. So if you like the video, please like, subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. Uh, a lot more cool videos to come, like I showed you in the beginning of this video. A lot of projects, both boat projects, side-by-side -side projects. We got some RV stuff going on. So a lot of cool things coming up the next couple months. So thanks again for watching. <music>